You're listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. And this is Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. Obviously, we're getting into our regional previews. We have two more regions to go. We're finishing them up. And we're going to start tonight on Tuesday the 18th with the Louisville Regional Preview. And Charge, we have some wonderful guests tonight. Would you like to introduce our wonderful panel? Yeah, these guys are beyond wonderful. They're uh, legends of the TBT, so I don't know how we, uh, if we're able to book them with their busy schedules this time of year. But uh, uh, we have Brandon Foreman, who is the GM currently of the Gutter Cats, so not the Gutter Cat Gangs, and uh, has a long history going all the way back to the Broad Street Bully. So welcome, Brandon. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. And, uh, I mean, these guys don't even need an introduction by this point. So we have uh, co-GM, the uh, Jay Kirschman and Matt Mitchell. So Everline Drive obviously started in that basement, maybe. I don't know. Is this where the first call went? I mean, we probably didn't have cell phones back then, uh, 10 years <laughs> ago, recruiting players. Uh, but uh, Jake's back home at Everline. And these guys have been around for 10 years and uh, participated in uh, every single TBT. Uh, played in all but one because of a tough COVID situation. But uh, – Always a pleasure to have Jake and Matt on the show. Appreciate it, guys. Happy to be here. And let's stick with them for a minute. So I want to talk about the fact that this is a, the 10th year of TBT. There's a there's a cultural thing. Uh, this is an event that's grown. And I do want to talk about – I know what you're laughing about this time of year <laughs> on the chat below. But uh, but also, we, we, we talked talk about Everline briefly. Jake, you played in the first TBT, correct? Yep, I played in the second game ever. Matt actually played in the first himself, but yeah, I played in the second game ever. Uh, how'd it go for you? Um, I scored nine points in the first half okay. and then got dunked on by Luke Bonner and was stretchered off to the hospital in a 42 point <laughs> loss. In a 40, so, so a close competitive loss. You know, we were up nine to two at one point, and I thought, I honestly thought for half a second we might have a shot, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, Smush Parker and his, his crew beat up on us pretty bad, but it was fun. You know. Matt, give us a scattering report on Jake. Phenomenal shooter. Got to defend. <laughs> what about what about a ball handler? <laughs> Phenomenal Solid. shooter? Phenomenal shooter? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Now, now, who did you play, Matt? I, I knew you played, but uh, I don't know the history of uh, – if, if, did you guys win any – I don't think you won any games, right? No, so I played with my alumni uh, from college, and uh, we played the very first game against uh, – who was it? T-Y-G-T-A-L, TIGTAL, with Hakeem Warwick and Marshall Henderson and co. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. We had, we had a few threes at the end to tie it to tend to overtime, but we lost by three. Wow, it's great game, though. It wasn't 42. Now, Brandon, and you didn't you go had, to the hospital, apparently. And you the hospital, that's key. <laughs> right. Now, Brandon, you didn't play in this before, right? No, um, my basketball days were done at, like, middle school. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. He's the brains of the now, operation. And you're now in Miami, correct, personally? You're now in Miami? Yeah, I just moved to Miami from Philly, okay. so yeah. I'm happy about that. Going to be here for at least a year, and we'll see what happens after that. Tell us a little bit about what a gutter cat is. Oh, man, where do I start with this one? Uh, well, the gutter cats basically originated as like a, an NFT project during the that gold rush of like NFTs and cryptocurrency a couple years ago. And slowly since like crypto has been kind of like – or mostly NFT projects have kind of been like, you know, decreasing in value and people kind of aren't currently seeing the value in that. They're kind of um, focusing on building like a, like a long-term brand that they can, you know, kind of infiltrate into the sports – and music realm. So, you know, one of the ways that Gutter Cats, you know, wanted to market their company is to kind of put a team in the, in the TBT uh, because of their relationship with uh, Puma that they currently have. So, you know, we started that last year. We were able to, you know, partner up with Team Hines last year. We made a, a great run, uh, ran into the Wichita State craziness um, and lost there. But, it was a great experience last year, and uh, we decided to run it back again this year. You lost to Wichita in what I assume was a fairly and conscientiously refereed game. No comment. <laughs> Got <laughs> you. On that note, let's go ahead and get into the slides a bit. Uh, thanks again for coming through, guys. So let's look at this bracket. Uh, first of all, Charge, this is an insane bracket. I personally think the West Virginia one's slightly deeper, but this competes with this in Syracuse as one of the top three brackets, correct? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I think there's just a great amount of depth here. And there, there's some unknowns with these uh, new alumni teams, but they're they're built uh, fairly strong. Uh, obviously, some, some really big brands, so excited about that. But, uh, you know, Denal for being an eight seed, uh, they look pretty legit, have some ex-NBA guys and, you know, uh, some NBA guys coaching. And so they're, they're going to be solid. And, of course, Shellshock and Gatorverse on that left-hand side is uh, – Oh, get some background noise, but uh, you know, Shellshock and Gatorverse were first year teams, look to be well organized and should put, put on a good show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's gonna be pretty fun. So, talking about the left is Brett, we have the Gutter Cats as your one seed, you have the eight seed, the Knopf, representing the greater Atlanta area, which we won't spoil us, but there's a couple of Memphis guys there, which always means they're gonna be pretty solid. Shellshock, the four seed, that is your uh, four seed, that is your uh, Maryland alums with some roster churn array, which I'll let Charge comment on, and the Gatorverse, which has been three times, I believe, renamed due to rights issues. That's your Florida alumni, uh, very quality. Slightly longer in the tooth team, but a pretty good team. And then charge that right side of the bracket had some old friends, correct? Yeah, obviously. Uh, I think the first round game matched up here, Eberline and Jackson, Tennessee is just going to be amazing. Uh, we we talked about this one from the very beginning. Not sure how TBT matched these guys up in the first round, especially you know with uh, Barford and Bradford uh, teaming up for Jackson and Eberline's been a steady performer most of their TBT careers. And then on the right hand side, you got the Ville, who who's a host team. So I, I have no idea why they want them to run into the winner of Eberline and Jackson. And then War Ready won their first game last year and. Uh, they can't be slept on. So uh, really, really solid right hand here. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a really messy bracket. I mean, it, I'll tell you one thing, because there's no disrespect to the dream of Dubois. I think I got right finally for a change. This is stronger at the eight line, which means this might be the toughest bracket. Pushing War Ready down to a seven is almost criminal. Uh, that's a very, they got their first wins. So this is a pretty, pretty messy bracket. So let's invite our guests back in. Uh Brandon, obviously, you know, there's some ties to Louisville uh, for your team. So this is your first choice of regions to go to. We've spoken about that off camera. Before. Did you? That's interesting. Somebody has a dog? That's me. Sorry, I'm going to have to go. That's okay. Your- <laughs> okay, that's fine. Dog, we, My dog's going to do that as soon as my girlfriend gets home, too. So it's not like an unheard of. Let's go ahead and let's skip asking Brandon for a second. And not a big deal. We'll let Brandon come back when he when he cues his back. So talking to the Everline guys, Jake and Matt, neither one of you take this. I know that you guys obviously had your pick of regions. You guys as known by people in the community as people who helped with TST. You were helped organize the teams there. So you probably had a more favored nation status of any of the alumni. So what shows you to pick this region? I'll go, Jake. Uh, you know, we have A.J. Slaughter back for the third year. A.J. is uh, from Louisville area. Um, and so when he heard that this was going to be a host, he right away said, hey, guys, like I understand there's there's other options and there's a, some some decisions that need to be made. But if there's any way we can do it in my hometown, I'd love to do it and have a chance to play in front of friends and family. Uh, so we knew pretty early on that if we had a chance to uh, pick where we went, that was somewhere we wanted to do. We've also had just some other Kentucky connections that it made sense to be playing in, in the state of Kentucky. So that's how we ended up there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's a pretty interesting way to go. So, Brandon, I think you're back with us. You want to unmute. Uh, yeah. You also have some ties on your team to Louisville. So that's kind of why you guys chose this region as well, right? We chose this region just because, it, it, you know, it's an easy place to get to compared to a lot of the other, you know, regions that we noticed. And it's, I mean, it's not like in Central America, but it's, I mean, we have guys from the West Coast and it's one of the most more Western regions, even though it's not really West, but the other options were like Lubbock and I forget what else is out there, but this, we just thought that this was like the best region for us to kind of just put it together and, and go to. Definitely, definitely. Okay, it's a small go. city. Like it's easy to yeah. get everywhere, especially the airport. To like all the hotels are pretty close. Well, I think you walk to the stadium. I mean, if you wanted to walk from the stadium, airport, I think you can. It's that close. Like uh, I think it's the Freedom Hall, which is right by the airport. Uh, yeah. Which you know, that's a pretty nice little convenience. Let's get in these matchups real quick. Let's talk about the spirit. So we have the Gutter Cat Gang, or excuse me, the Gutter Cats. Let's skip the gang part. I'm I'm living in the past. As your one seed versus number eight, the Noff. <laughs> So looking at this roster, now, one thing I do want to hit, Brandon, is how exciting was it, obviously, having a team of this quality. QJ Peterson played in Summer League. He was great for the Knicks. Uh, you, you, he's still coming, which is great news for you guys. How much fun was it watching him play so well for the New York Knicks in Las Vegas? 
it, it really was incredible, to be honest. I mean, just like being around him last year and meeting him for the first time, like he was just all about just getting better. Like he would come to the gym way before everyone else and just get up shots and he was just locked in and he cares about his teammates. Like he's all in on just, you know, trying to, you know, be the best he could be both on and off the court. So, you know, when I, you know, saw him play in, in the, in the uh, summer league, I wasn't surprised to see the success that he was having. I'm pretty uh, happy that the Knicks ended up giving him the chance to play because they didn't guarantee him uh, any minutes from reading the, uh, the article that he posted or the uh, the tweets that he posted about, you know, what he was told by his agent. So really happy to see him play well on that. And, and then hopefully, you know, once this is done, you know, an NBA team will, you know, sign him to a deal, which is what he deserves. Yeah, it looks like you guys got most of your starting roster back from last year. Obviously, Tyrese has moved on and went to – I'm losing it, uh, the other guy, sideline. Uh, nice. But uh, Will Cherry, Odiasi, Peterson, uh, you know, where's the other guys looking for? This is going to be one of these nights. Uh, but uh, – <laughs> We also uh, added um, Isaiah Miller and Frank Bartley uh, to our yeah. roster. As well. So those are two guys that I think are going to make a – a big difference for us. And the thing that I like about the way that our roster is constructed is that we have a lot of guys returning. So obviously chemistry in this type of tournament is very important. Uh, and then our coach has coached a lot of these guys. So he's got that, you know, he understands how to utilize certain players. So I think that's something that when, you know, you're trying to figure out who's going to be able to advance far in the tournament, you have to consider chemistry and how the coach is going to utilize the players and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm mean, looking at this roster too. Obviously, the quality. You know, it's rare to see players where everybody played professionally last year, um, and it's kind of interesting because they all played the highest level Euro League. Uh, you've got guys playing, you know, highest levels. Yeah, I played in China, high levels in Italy. But one thing I'm looking at this is like it looks like you got nobody taller than six nine, which isn't a death knell in this event. There's not a lot of size, but like, is that a weakness that you lack size, or is it a strength that everybody's switchable? So I think the weakness last year was that we just couldn't rebound. Um, and I think we addressed that with uh, Derek Barden, who's been a very good player in Australia this year. Uh, he was an excellent rebounder there. And even though he's not seven feet tall, he's very athletic and strong. Uh, and then Angelo Calario, he was supposed to play for us last year, and he got hurt right before the tournament. So he's going to, I think, also make a difference for us on the boards. And then obviously Ty um, – He's just a difference maker when it comes to rim protection. Uh, so I think having him just kind of holding the fort down there, I think we're going to be good in, in terms of size. And then we have we have a lot of wings that are that are long. I mean, like Jarrell Eddy's like six seven. Uh, Dwayne Jackson's like six nine, and he's very very athletic. So we we have I think really I don't, I'm not really concerned about like having a seven footer or anything like that. Yeah, I, I don't think you should be either, to be honest with you. This roster is definitely solid. I just felt like I'd ask it. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about your opponent real quick. So, you guys are going to be playing the Knopf, uh, which they you guys hail from Atlanta. It's their first time in there. Um, obviously, I'm a little partial on a certain level, mainly because, as everybody knows, who watch this. I'm a huge Memphis fan. And having Kareem Burt, Bruton and um, Rainier Thornton, two guys who played at Memphis, a uh, pretty interesting bunch of guys to have. But so – have you started scouting this team, first of all, Brandon? Is there anything out this, the, about their roster that stands out? So I haven't personally been scouting the team, but I'm honestly pretty pretty damn impressed that, with this team. I mean, they have a guy that I tried to get for years, um, and Andrew Godlock. He was, yeah. like, one of the best players in Europe. He played in the NBA. I'm, like, he's a high-level player that no one's even really talking about. So we have to come prepared to guard him uh, for sure. And then DeMarcus Simons was a really good college player. I don't think he's been playing, you know, pro since college from what I saw, but he was a very good college player that I thought had a chance at the NBA. So, I mean, these guys, they have, they're all from like the same area. They all know each other probably like they're, this is not a joke of a team. Like this is a legit eight seed. They could probably be a better seed in other regions. Yeah, I think I think we were talking about the the top eight seeds. This being one of them. Also, the Big Five is one that's a really toughly seeded eight. So this is while you're the one seed, there's there really isn't a favorable seed. Like in some regions, the eight or the seven's gettable, but like 
right down to eight, this this is a complete mess of a region. There's just too much talent. Um, also, yeah, Derek yeah. Saint Hilaire is pretty good too. I think he's gonna he played in TBT before. Uh, put up a really strong game. I, my my one concern is they were on social media in the last day or so looking for two more players. So that always gets me a little nervous as to who on this roster is not showing. If uh, you're 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 trying to recruit this late in the game, so something to watch for. But they they got some good backing and some NBA guys coach and Brandon Goodwood's supposed to be an assistant coach uh, for these guys. So I think they're going to be super super gritty. But uh, a little red flag thrown up. Uh, I think it was yesterday when I saw they were trying to recruit players. Brandon, you could go ahead and uh, message Goodlock right now and see if he's actually going to stick. Maybe you can steal a player right now. If they're filling for players, maybe maybe there's a player to be taken. <laughs> there we go. Also, uh, the Knopf have assistant coach. Also, uh, Wesley Weatherspoon, uh, University of Memphis Power Forward, is also on the coaching staff. So big Memphis ties. We used to recruit Atlanta a lot when um, – when Pastner was the coach, it's kind of a funny little memory for them. So I'm kind of hoping they show out well, but I don't think they're going to put a lot of work on the gutter cats, which means obviously now that I said that they might have a chance. Uh, Cause that is the curse of the uh, thing. Now we have a first time alumni matchup here and charge. I'm going to let you talk about this because, and this is interesting because shell shock the last time they played this group of Maryland players were in Louisville as they were losing to Kansas in the 2016 NCAAs. But this roster's undergone some changes. Charge, is this a good time to talk about what's happening with the rosters in general this year in TBT? Yeah, this this year more than any, they, they have just been volatile. And uh, I don't know, I guess you can read between the lines. I don't know if it's intentional or unintentional. But, uh, you know, all especially these alumni teams are definitely over-promising uh players in in under delivering and we've seen this uh uh with shell shock we've seen this with uh kansas especially and so it, it, it's just uh i i understand uh the, the need for the alumni teams and building that fan base and bringing those people together but it's uh too much bait and switch to going on this year and uh you know i i think we got to try to or not we uh tbt's got to try to please that a little bit more um you know just uh for, for realism's sake. So, you know, speaking of shell shock, uh, you know, his team was built, uh, built upon mellow tremble. And obviously he's uh, already out. Uh, one of their other, uh, you would argue top two players, Anthony Brown is out. And, you know, so, it, and we've just heard all through, you know, this TBT that there's so many players on rosters that never intended to play. So it just makes it really tough. Uh, you know, I'm sure GM's trying to plan and to strategize against their teams, but you know, we're, we're just, uh, you know, some Jamokes uh, trying to have a little fun, do some fantasy games, and it's just uh, just been a, a whirlwind tour. But, you know, they're, they're still going to be a competitive team, No, uh, You know, they got some uh, talent with Maurice Creek going over there from uh, sideline, and, you know, they got some guys that can ball. So I, I don't think this team's horrible by any stretch, but, uh, you know, losing your top two guys, and especially the uh, centerpiece, Mellow Tremble, is just a tough go before the tournament even starts. Now, Brandon, how do you feel about the fact that your entire side of the bracket is three teams that you could play, none of which have TBT experience? Does that give the Gutter Cats a slight leg up? I definitely prefer to play teams that don't have experience for those first couple games uh, just because it's so hard to win in this tournament. Like People don't realize until they're a part of it how tough this is. Uh, but, I mean, you can't overlook anyone. I mean, it's, if you have one bad day, it's it's over you got to be you got to be locked in every single matchup and i mean these two teams I, alumni teams usually have more chemistry than non-alumni teams so you know it's i'm glad that we're not playing like an alumni team the first game but you try to avoid alumni teams until like the third or fourth game usually uh last year we ended up playing an alumni team pretty much every round but but yeah i mean Listen, I'm, I'm surprised that they lost, that Shellshock lost, like, two of their best players. And that's the tough part of this tournament. Like, you get these high-level guys, and then, like, they could have contracts where, like, teams tell them they can't play, or agents say you shouldn't play or you'll get hurt and stuff like that. So I think that – I mean, you can still – I still think Shellshock's a good team. It just obviously hurts their chances when they lose their top two players. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned the alumni teams having more chemistry. And it's something I always am kind of fascinated by because there's few high-level teams in TPT who don't have an alumni base. And obviously one of them is Everline Drive. So, like, how do you guys manufacture that level of camaraderie when you don't have that combined experience of, like, going to the same school or playing for the same jersey? 
Yeah, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, the big thing is we try to at least bring two or three guys back every year just to have some sort of camaraderie. But like Brandon said, you know, just as TBT goes, players' schedules and everything is so volatile. Even for alumni teams, I think a lot of times it's hard to bring back the same guys. So I think, you know, having a few players come back every year and then just those two to three to four days before that you get to practice is really everything, just in terms of getting guys on the same page and making sure they're ready to – ready to rock because in a like he said in a single elimination tournament it, it it's not even one bad game you can have one bad quarter and that can be it so it, one bad possession yeah that's just wild it's such a crazy thing yeah now going on this alumni trip we also have the gataverse which is a new team coming out the florida alums and it's a first time entry and the thing that i find fascinating is, is there's actually some real brand name talent guys like Corey brewer who played in the nba for quite a while uh was actually a big minute player in the nba at one point Torian Green, Walter Hodge, the marquee value is there, but this is a, a kind of an older team. So, Brandon, we look at this team, like, obviously, we're not going to speak ill of these guys. These guys have, have earned their buckets. They've earned their money. So, all respect to these players. But when you see a roster that has guys who are 37, 39, 36, is that something that kind of makes you go, maybe we try to speed this game up? I mean, you can look at it two ways. I mean, I think experience, just playing basketball for all those years, is definitely going to help them. And as long as they have some, you know, youthful guys to kind of offset that, I don't think age is really that big of a deal, especially because these games are not as long as a normal, as a normal game. And this is also not like a full season that these guys are playing. They're, they're only playing, you know, three games in four days or five days. So, I mean, I still think Corey Brewer is going to be bringing his A game. I don't, if he's in, as long as he's in shape, like, I mean, these guys probably, probably still hoop. What I find interesting too is like I do wonder what a guy like Corey Brewer. Corey Brewer was again he's he's made his money. He's an NBA guy who played quite a while in the league, so he's financially probably secure. Uh, he's almost got to be playing this for fun. I think does the motivation come into question? You think a little bit like why why is he here? That's a good question. I don't think I, I don't know if I'd be able to answer that, but I mean I'm sure he's a competitive guy, and this is a very competitive tournament. Like, I, I think when guys get here, you have to have the mentality that you want to just dominate um, in this type of tournament. So I don't think he would he would commit to something like this unless he was like a competitive guy and wanted to, to you know, work his ass off. And obviously, over the years, I mean, we've had guys from the league that have come in to the TBT and have failed because mm -hmm. they probably just didn't treat it as like a serious thing. But then we had guys like Joe Johnson, who was in tip top shape and was locked in and was dominating everyone. So. And then, Bib yeah, Mike Bibby was a part of this in the past. So, like, there's it goes both ways. It just depends on the guy and what his makeup is. Yeah, I mean, the Joe the Joe Johnson thing is just obviously I said Joe being an incredible player. He's playing that other league, the one that doesn't play defense at all now, which is always kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing to look on Twitter is look at big three, and they always show game-winning shots. Like, look at this game-winning shot, and the closeout's always someone contesting a three by not getting past the free throw line and kind of doing a hand wave. And that's the con that's the contest. They're basically playing horse. It's ridiculous. Okay. Let's go to the other side of the bracket. Hey, it's our old friends, Everline drive. These are some nice guys. Always. Uh, again, we have Matt and Jake here. Uh, one of the original TBT teams. I think you guys have been in every TBT, correct? Everyone. Everyone. That's correct. Yep, yep. <clears throat> qualified. I mean, you didn't play in the bubble because you guys got nicked for having the virus, but the reality is like you were qualified in every TPT. So, and you get no favors playing the Jacks underdog. So this is an interesting team. You guys have always had a high level team and I always find your team fascinating. So I'm always like, how in God's name do two guys who are relatively, let's just say not well known. One of which looks like Super Mario with that facial hair today. You literally look like you're in a Mario Brothers movie, which is great. Love it. Uh, yeah, I, I, more, more Mario than Luigi. You're a leading man, definitely. And then you get this roster of really good players. Like, how does the recruiting work for Everline Drive? Matt, take the lead. I think, you know, it's it's a year-round um, effort, right? So this is not something where – forget year-round. This is 10 years in the making, really. So – you know, I think early on we were we really were nobodies. Nobody knew us. I would reach out to them. Whether they thought TBT was even real or a scam, they surely didn't know who I was. And so there's a lot of dismissing of what this thing's about. But the longer you've been in it, the relationships you've built, you start to build some credibility, uh, your reputation. It does make it a lot easier. So I, I can say it hasn't got easier in the sense of competition where, you know, Brandon and I are probably recruiting the same players. That's gotten harder because just the talent has gotten greater. But as far as 
um, just our ability to be respected and, and people listen to, you know, what we're trying to do and put together that has gotten easier. So it just takes hard work, a lot of communication. Uh, this is not a, you know, April, May, June type thing. This is a October, November, December, checking on these guys, following throughout their seasons, building that relationship with them so that when time comes for TBT, we're a known entity to them and they're interested in playing with us. So um, it's, it's, I really enjoy it, but it, it certainly is uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah, Matt, it's funny you say that because like over the past like five, six years, like I've recruited about like four or five of these players. I, I, Tyler, Lawson, <laughs> Tyler Larson was actually supposed to be on our roster the year that we played you guys in, in Bay or was it LA the year we yeah. played you in LA, he was supposed to be on our roster. Matt Bobley is a guy that I've like recruited in the past. DJ Cooper, I tried so hard to get like three, four, or like four or five years ago. I was really recruiting yeah. him hard. So it's funny to see I mean, all these games. And, and, and you, you guys have Coyote, you guys have Coyote out there. We had him in the bubble in 2020. So right. it's, there's a ton, ton of crossover for sure, especially yeah. when you look at some of the non alumni teams. It makes that pool that much smaller of like the elite guys that we all want to go after. Um, we can't go after the ones that already kind of accounted for from their alumni. So there's only so many free agents, I guess, out there that we can, we can recruit, but. Yeah. And, and this team's looking really good. Um, you know, Jackson's been getting a lot of shine for the, the, the Barford Bradford connection, but uh, your guards of Slaughter and DJ Cooper uh, are no slouch. Uh, DJ Cooper, obviously, I think you guys landed him even before uh, Ohio university did not get into uh, the TBT. So talk about uh, Slaughter and Cooper versus Bradford Barford. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. going to be a, Go ahead, you go, Matt. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, but I mean, it's going to be a great matchup. Obviously, Barford is someone we've watched every year, but haven't gone up against yet. And Bradford obviously took the Buccaneers on that big run um, very recently. So, I mean, as good as they are, we're super confident in our guys. Like, you know, we in 2021 had a pretty deep run with Slaughter and Archie on the roster before falling to TNT, and then. Last year, obviously, we had the early exit, but AJ had like eight points in three minutes and then sprained his ankle and didn't play the rest of the game. So, um, I mean, we think AJ's as good as anyone in this tournament. And Cooper was someone we identified pretty early on, as you said, and were able to kind of lure him from Ohio before they didn't make it. Um, you know, he was averaging like 12 or 13 assists overseas, like one of the best passers in the world. And so we're super happy to have him around guys like AJ, who are as good a shooter as he is. Yeah, and, and the other thing that I think you guys have always come with is some good professional coaching. So uh, just well organized team, some great coaching. So uh, your coaching staff this year, same guys coming back, correct? Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a, a mixture. One new face, Tom Hankins, who's currently the head coach for the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. Um, he's going to be, be with us this year as well. As Cody Toppert, who's with LSU, has likely going to have some recruiting obligations and isn't super dependable. Um, and so we're going to bring Tom in to help and, and lend another hand there. Uh, but that's that's been something, you know, Jake and I are not basketball, um, you know, experts in the sense of on the court X's and O's. Um, and so it's really been important for us to bring really elite talent and coaches that gets the respect of our players. When you only have a few days to prepare, uh, you got to have guys to, to maximize that and take advantage of the time we do have. So it's important to have good quality coaches. And we're excited about the group we have. Yeah, before we jump over to Jackson, you guys had the pleasure of being in the uh, inaugural TST. So we referenced that at the uh, beginning. So your guys, uh, Beasley United, correct? Uh, yep, Conrad and Beasley United. Yep. Yeah, Conrad and Beasley. There we go. So I, to be honest with you, I watch soccer like every four years when the World Cup's on. But I watch like almost every one of those thinking TST games. And uh, uh, fun to watch. So how's that experience compare or the environment or the action to a TBT uh run from a GM perspective or just being out there, being part of it. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was fantastic. It was a lot for Matt and I to do that and then go right into TBT. But um, you know, it, it meant a lot for us to kind of be the only guys to try to do both. And um, I mean, with the organizers having the nine years of TBT experience, like the, the area and everything they had at TST was incredible. Um, it was super nice, too, to have three games guaranteed in group play. So we actually lost our second game and didn't get to go, didn't have to go home, which was super, super nice. So um, it was TST was honestly incredible. It kind of blew our expectations out of the water. Um, they sold out basically every single game once it got to the knockouts. And like so we were lucky enough to be able to make it to the quarterfinals. And uh, it was super, super fun. We plan to do it again, but obviously we got to get through 
TBT first and hopefully make a little run here as well. Priorities. You got to have priorities. Uh, by the way, talk about going deep. What happened last year? I don't remember. You guys did <laughs> what last year? Bowed out early. We lost our first game to Bleed Green. Who good was team. Under good team. Who understood. Yeah, very good team. Um, and like I said, as much as that sucked, that was – that was our first time losing our first game since 2016. And like I said, I think a large part of that was AJ Slaughter, who I think we on a bash league would say is our most important player, uh, sprained his ankle five minutes in. So it, it was tough. And we still had the lead going into Elam, but, you know, Shannon Shorter hit like a step back 30 footer. And that's one of those things where once that happens to start Elam, you're like, oh, so this is how it's going to go. Oh, yeah, okay. Definitely. definitely. And, uh, you know, they ended well, up beating well, us I think, by three. Yeah, it happens. Well, here's hoping that uh, you guys don't repeat that. But unfortunately, you have another underseated team. Speaking of underseated teams, you have the Jackson Rose. Now, I I find them to be a fascinating squad because it's like you have two high level Euro European level stars in Barford and Deshanta Bradford, major firepower, and then the rest of their team, half of them are like truck drivers or something. Like, I find the whole the whole dynamic fascinating. Like this is one team that goes back to the your teams your tournament ethos, which everybody on this call remembers. This tournament was founded on kind of anybody can get in. We'll take all comers. If you're organized and you got some balls, let's play, you know? So this is a throwback. This is really a team that belongs in, much like Everline, as part of a 10-year anniversary because it goes back to the original ethos of this. But I want to ask Jake and Matt. We'll stay with Matt because Jake was just talking. Matt, no favors there, right? I mean, hey, great job. Thanks for helping FTST. We love you guys. Here's Jalen Barford. Have fun. Like, what is that? Like, is that just BS? You know, we, we saw the, the eight teams and we were kind of trying to, in our mind, picture or anticipate who we might get seated up against. And you try to assume they're going to put some alumni teams or this or that. Uh, we felt, you know, any of the top three could have been in any order potentially. But we, we actually saw Jackson as a team that, you know, we very well could be up against and, and knew that uh, a Jalen Barford led team is going to be a scary team. Uh, I think, I don't know if we've mentioned it or if we did earlier before the show started. To that point, though, I think there's, eight tough teams in this region and there's no easy teams. There's no, no gimmies by any means. You have to, you have to win six tough games to win this tournament. Um, and so, you know, in some ways we'll, we'll, we'll come with a, a tough first opponent and maybe that'll prepare us if we are able to get out of that for our next game. So uh, just take it a game at a time and, and certainly no, no easy, easy uh, uh, set up there for that first game. No easy teams. It's interesting because, like, every team in this event's gone deep. Gutter Cats, uh, Super 16 last year. So they did it last year, right? And yep. then uh, Everline has made a TBT final. And the underdogs won the Memphis Regional as an eight seed back in 2019. So every one of these teams, the only teams that haven't gone deep in this in this region just haven't played before. Everybody I've experienced has gotten at least one win and usually multiple on the belt. So, Charge, looking at this game, what excites you about that dynamic of sort of the, the truck drivers and the superstars? Like, what makes this a fun team to watch? Yeah, I, I mean, I just think the, the whole matchup, uh, you know, very similar on, on, on both sides, you know. So you have Jackson Thunder, the under, underdogs. You got the 10th anniversary of uh, Everline, and, you know, both teams un, unheralded, underrated, and, uh, you know, have grown through the TBT into these kind of massive franchises and and to get this in the first round is, is just insane and it just uh just the, the grit the flight i mean jackson a lot of pride coming from a small town and you know these guys are, are feisty and the everline guys been building forever so it, it's just really i i think uh for a first round matchup crazy and whoever wins this obviously you know may take on deville or war ready but uh should should be able to challenge a team like gutter cat uh, more towards those regional finals so uh yeah i i, I think whoever wins this game probably advances past deville and uh look, looking at the regional finals yeah I, I would actually kind of agree with that we won't tease our picks too heavily but i definitely think you're you're on the right track now brandon you got qj this year he had tyrese rice last year so you're no you're no uh uh, no slash for having dominant guards in your team. What does having a dominant guard in a one and done event like TBT present as a challenge to stop? Like how, how does Everline scheme or how do you stop a ball dominant scoring guard like a Jalen Brawford, like a Tyrese Rice, like a QJ? How do you do that? Well, I mean, you can't really stop these guys in a tournament like this, but you can do your best to kind of contain them and make others beat you. I mean, I, we played Jalen last year. Uh, when he was on Team Arkansas, and he got his points. Like he was, he was, he was playing very well. But I think we we put so much pressure on him with like our you know pesky guards. Like Will Cherry was in his face. 
Uh, we just had guys that were on top of him the whole game and just tried to – I mean, you can only do so much on, on a guy like that's as talented as him. So I think – but in this tournament, you need to have, you know, a guard who can create his own shot and just, you know, kind of just get hot at the right time. I mean, that's like kind of the – the playbook on winning these tournaments. You need to have those crafty guards that can get open and make shots. And you also need to have one or two other scoring options in case that one player, you know, gets cold. So yeah, you can't really do much to contain guys in the tournament, but you just have to have, you know, guys that are locked in on the, on the defensive end. And I think like, especially our team this year, we tried to focus on having guys like Isaiah Miller and uh, Will Cherry that are just elite defensive players. that can put pressure on these, you know, dominant guards. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a definitely an interesting challenge. This, this might be one of the two first round games I'm most excited to see. With the other one being uh, West Virginia's four or five matchup, I'm really kind of fascinated by Pitt versus Marshall. So this will be a really fun matchup. I, 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 I won't tip my hand, but the winner of this game I have going very deep in this region. Okay, let's get to the last matchup. Uh, the Ville. Look, this is the first time TBT entry and also first time hosts. I mean, Louisville is having tough times. They went four and twenty eight last year as a college uh obviously anybody who follows this podcast knows i find that endlessly amusing uh they're two-time national champions really quality team by the way it's a great time to mention that this uh podcast is sponsored by porcini's restaurant in louisville if you know you know uh look this team's gonna go as far as russ smith takes them they also have kyle Couric, who is uh, a euro league standout so charge looking at this roster russ smith was made for this event correct yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, he's, you know, put 60 plus points up in the G League, puts up insane numbers uh, overseas. And, and this is a guy who can who, who can go off. I, I don't know what the G League record is for points in the game off the top of my head. But, uh, you know, th th this is one you may see it uh, happen in the opening round against uh, War Ready. And these guys, I, I think if they, they come uh, in shape and, and ready to go are going to be tough. I mean, so you got Russ Smith, Onawaku, Solid, Siva. I know you've seen some tape and you weren't impressed, but, uh, you know, if he uh, – uh, gets in, in game shape. He's good. The hand is going to be tough. I mean, these guys are tough uh, up and down the lineup. So it's it's, it's going to be a fun game. And, uh, you know, having that uh, home uh, court, I don't know how ticket sales are going there right now compared to Lubbock. Sounds like they're going really good. Wichita is always really good. So if the Ville shows up with a, a big crowd, that's that's going to even make it a little bit tougher on, on the folks. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think as long as they come right and they play up to their ability, they're going to be a tough out. It's interesting, too, because besides Russ, they've got some size. you got Naku, who put up 10 in Israel. Also, they got Nick Mayo, who put up almost 14 in Japan. Now, Matt, obviously, you're someone who's had Mayo before, so you speak highly to his game, correct? Yeah, Nick's a phenomenal talent. We we thought he was a lock to bring back this year. There's some uh, family and close friend ties to uh, Dylan Avar, who was a former teammate of his at Eastern Kentucky when he was Nick was there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so he, we got swayed away by one of his good friends, and he was he was super cool about it. Was proactively told us like, "Hey, you're going to kill me, but I'm going to run with these guys." And so I I appreciate when guys do that versus just ghosting you. Uh, but great great player. I think he's going to be the the only issue I have, or I've been giving him a hard time, is they ended up bringing in a lot of fours and fives at his position that have Louisville ties, and he doesn't. And I was giving him a hard time, and he, hopefully he sees the floor, whereas with us he would have been a focal piece. So maybe we'll get him back next year if that doesn't go well. What I love about this is already match recruiting for 2024. He's already starting. Like, no, we'll make you a focal piece, Nick. We're going we're gonna to bring you right back. We're going to bring you right back. Has anybody been to Freedom Hall before? I've never had the pleasure. Not so, Char Charge, if I do – what's up? I've never been to Louisville. I've driven. Oh, really? I don't. I don't think I'm allowed to go. I think Memphis fans are usually jailed on site there. Um, but we'll see what happens. We're going to try to get out there for at least one game. Uh, we had our press pass to approve. It's one place I'd like to go. It's, it's a historic venue, though. In fact, it's funny. My partner's first gift to me was tickets to see Louisville Slough in college when we were in St. Louis, and uh, she's like, "Oh, he's a nice guy. He's my boyfriend. We have basketball tickets. He loves basketball." And she didn't know how crazy I was. I spent 40 minutes yelling at Denny Crum from like eight seats behind him. And she's like embarrassed. She's like, oh, my God, what is wrong with him? So may Denny Crum rest in peace. A great legendary coach, obviously. I think I think it'd be fun to play in a legendary venue like Freedom Hall. I think it's one great thing about TBT as well. They've done the Palestra. Uh, they did the Pit last year. 
they're doing Coke Arena now. They really go to some of the best and brightest arenas that are historic and get some good games. So I think I think Freedom Hall will be a real treat. Our last team we're going to preview is War Ready, which again, like War Ready, has got a very checkered pass on our podcast. We are very big fans of what they do. We're very big fans of the coach Matt Michelle, or rather the GM Matt Michella, and they have done nothing but disappoint us day in and day out the last three years, getting curb stomped in the bubble, getting curb stomped in 2021. And then we finally gave up on unfavorable. They're going to curve stop 2022. And they finally get off the schneid being Woco Showtime, surviving a fight another day. And they've added some reinforcements. Charge, Sean Willett is an ad. Is he one of the best under the radar additions of any team in TBT? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we've seen him uh, play with D2 and just absolutely uh, tear it up. And I, I knew the D2 team was in trouble once we saw this uh, kind of uh, transfer over. D2 was kind of struggling to look to form a team and, uh, you know, without uh, Grant being part of it this year. And Sean Will has just been phenomenal, double-double machine. And, and, and this team is really strong and steady with overseas pros. So, you know, we goof and, you know, they got uh, the seven seed. But, I mean, these guys are really, really good professionals. And, you know, with the addition of uh, Willett uh, to, to, you know, stabilize, you know, that position is, is going to be strong for these guys. He plays really big. And these guys have been playing together for a while now. Some of these guys going back to the old Tampa 2020 days. So we talked about experience in the TBT and, you know, so – couple losses you finally get a win and so the momentum definitely is on their uh side you know unfortunately you know this this, this whole region was a little little screwy with the, the whole jackson and uh everline matchup and then more ready falling all the way down to seven to get to ville is didn't do them any favors but if they survive in advance and you know it's, it's legit and then we got a, another credible round two matchup with the winner of everline jackson yeah, I think it's interesting. You always see the the alumni teams, and they're, it's it's a sensible thing. Make the alumni teams play each other, keep some fan bases that are national involved, let the TBTOGs, the ones who had the colors of the event, play each other. So it makes sense with, if not from a seeding standpoint, strength on strength, it doesn't make sense from a narrative standpoint. This was a bracket that may have not been seeded perfectly by strength, but it was probably pretty well narratively uh, structured. So it's a pretty good team. So let's get right to the picks. We're kind of much completing the show so let's get to where we put our money where our mouth is now obviously we always tell people before we reveal the tricks you know we've made friends with pretty much everybody in this community so don't take the picks personally and i'm going to say that a lot more than charge today i think so yeah and, and more than ever with all the changes uh i, I will do my final bracket tonight before but uh, one of these picks i'm 100 changing yeah um I uh, definitely we, – we, well, which one are you changing? Go ahead and say which one you're changing, first of all. I'm, I'm changing Jackson to Everline. Everline's okay. going – they're going to roll on him. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's called pandering, Charge. Just in case you're wondering what happens here, uh, one versus five, we both pick Gutter Cats over the Knopf. We're both picking Shell Shock over the Gator versus the 4-5. We both on the board are picking Jackson as the six to upset Everline, but Charge being – pandering is going to go ahead and switch it to mm -hmm. Everline's drive just because he likes so I, much I went out there and uh, drafted DJ Cooper. I've got confidence Everline. They, uh, I, I feel really good about this matchup for Everline. You suck up. Not and then, of just course, because they're on the show. You suck up. <laughs> and then Charge is picking the Vill, which is a smart pick. I'm taking War Ready to upset the Vill because I am an idiot and I hate the Vill. Charge is taking the Vill, which is interesting because they're a first time on my team. Uh, I guess he thinks the crowd in West Virginia, or not West Virginia, in Louisville will be mostly drunk and loud, which is a good bet. And I'm going to go like, uh, Ru Russ and Onawaku, so I know Gutter Cat and Everline will have something to say about this. But, yeah, they're a first-year alumni, but their their talent level is just far and above. Onawaku is one of the best big men in the, the TBT. Russ Smith, uh, arguably the best player in the TBT. Kind of like when Jimmer was playing. I mean, you, you don't bet against Jimmer. And so uh, kind of taking the same logic with Russ Smith this yeah. year with DeVille. All, all the championships Jimmer's won in this event. And then the uh, uh, the underdogs, but obviously. you guys, yeah, these guys beat Jimmer. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah, they beat Jimmer, yes. Yeah, I was saying. there. I was at the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm picking the underdogs to go through the region just because I figure that's a great narrative. So this is the one uh, pick set where I went really aggressive with upsets. Again, Vill for charge, underdogs for me. So first of all, Brandon, uh, neither one of us picked your team. Can you please take a screenshot of this? Tell your team for motivation. Not that they need any more, but you can tell them the host of the podcast didn't pick them. Is that going to help your team? I assume they couldn't care less. No hurt feelings. We, we don't want people to pick us to win. Uh, we want to kind of go under the radar. We feel that we have the camaraderie from last year. We added some new pieces this year. We, you know, have a 
We have guys that have experience playing in this tournament and playing in the highest level overseas. You honestly, like any team from this region can win this region. This is a very talented region. I, I keep hearing West Virginia is the most talented. Like I, I don't know. I, I think this region's just as talented in my opinion. Uh, the Ville, I mean, they're, they're a new team, but they are loaded. So we don't know like how that's going to turn out because like Peyton Siva and Russ Smith, they've, like you have to have great guards to win in this tournament. So I understand where you're coming from with, with picking the bill to win. Uh, but we like to go under the radar. We're, we're happy with you not picking us. And Matt and uh, Jake, obviously no hard feelings, but uh, this is, this helps, right? This is good for you guys to see. Yeah, I think, I think it's good. I mean, it, it, it's funny, even with the announcement show with like Zoldan and Greenberg, it's, if you didn't know the seating, you would think Jackson's a three because everyone seems to think they're going to win, um, which is fine, which is good. Um, you know, like I said, I, I think in the past few years, we've had a lot more people pick us to go further. And I, I think the loss last year probably left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. But like I said, we've retooled and we're we're confident going in the next week. Yeah, I think you yeah, should be. I mean, the thing is, picks be damned. This is a really, really, really high quality roster. And uh, this this region's one of the ones I'm most favored in seeing. So anyway, it's been fun. So any final thoughts, guys? Uh, Charge, what do you think? This is probably one of the top two regions. Yeah, right? yeah, and I, I think we identified where you know really fond of Syracuse, West Virginia, and uh, Louisville from a just pure talent standpoint. And it's going to be a, a dogfight, and it's going to be fun, and uh, hoping to get down there and take in some of the action. But uh, obviously, Eberline and Gutter Cats are going to bring their best game and put on a good show. So win, lose, or draw, uh, wish you guys all the best of luck. Yeah, definitely, that should be fun. All right, tonight we had. Brandon Foreman, GM of the Gutter Cats, and Jake Hirschman and Matt Mitchell, co-GMs of Everline Drive. Good teams and good guys all. Gentlemen, good luck in Louisville. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. And this has been Charge and Zoom Zoom the TBT with our Louisville preview. Hope you enjoyed listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hainer. Subscribe to YouTube, follow on Twitter, and give us your money.